All right, peace, family. It's your bro, Kimonte, tapping in with the Creators Universe podcast uh, reboot, I guess you can call it, because we're in a new location. We're also with a special guest, and I'll let her introduce herself. She's very, y'all know who she is. Hi, guys. I'm Nila. Okay, and uh, I mean, you can, do you want to go over some of your accolades? Because you can do that. My accolades? Yeah. Like, I'm a content creator, and yeah. I speak for black people. I talk about black economics, black empowerment on TikTok and YouTube. So tap in and set chats with Nila. Cool. That, that's real smooth. So um, my name is Kimonte Martin. Y'all can follow me at Kimonte. I'm sure you are following me. You can unfollow me if you don't fuck with me, but if you like it and you rock with me, continue to follow me. I have very positive content, and not only that, but um, you know, I, I believe that you know we're pushing a, a pretty good message. So today's topic is you know the BT work was last weekend, right? Yeah, I mean, and, uh, I think so. Yeah, yeah, I didn't watch it. Did you? I saw snippets. Mm -hmm. That's all I needed to see. What you What you think about it? We've 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 definitely come um, a long way, not necessarily a good way, from Motown, from black owned music, so it's definitely something. Yeah, okay, so as far as like okay, do you think we're still watching B E T with the same level of, of excitement or do you think that, you know, it lost some of the luster for it? I think it definitely lost some. Um, majority, I feel like majority of the black community, like we know talent. Like mm -hmm. we know that a lot of the celebrities that we see who are pushing out the music, who are kind of like popular people right now, the BET Awards, they are talented. But, mm -hmm. you know, we don't own the record labels. So mm -hmm. I feel like, you know, the music that they push out has to be a certain way. And it's, um, it's not the best. It's not like empowerment. It's not like a good message and so it waters down their own talent so of course I feel as though we're not seeing the same excitement because it's not you know I, no disrespect to him but I don't think there could have been a blue face on Motown you know mm -hmm. what I mean like they they had to be skilled they had mm -hmm. to dance they had to really be about something and have a message in their music and I don't think they have to do that today no absolutely and just to kind of echo the, the points you made about ownership because that's a big a big deal with me as well like I feel like we are in a different age and, you know, technology, a different age and consciousness where, like, there's not a lot of room or excuses for people not having ownership of their art, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of the, a lot of, like, now it's a little bit easier to release music, it's a little easier to um, have rights to your music and to have full control. So, yeah, um, I just feel like it's like lack of knowledge. Like I yeah. feel like most of them either are looking for a quick money come up, right. um, and typically speaking, that's why you would produce the music that you produce that's right. not, you know, about something. So it's definitely about money. So yeah, like okay, so would that take away some of our points about like can we knock a, someone like a blue face for taking a record deal and rapping about what he raps about if he's coming from poverty and he wants to get out? Is that like a you know, it's kind of like you, I don't know, because at one side you understand that we don't have too much ownership in our community and our record labels oftentimes are not black owned. So, and if they are black owned, they're not going to give you millions of dollars. But then on the other hand, it's like, but are you going to promote violence and over sexualization of mm. black women? So for me, it's like, you know, obviously I would never choose the money, but so it's definitely their responsibility because it's like when well, you're choosing money over integrity, integrity and the, the betterment of your people. Yeah, I, I agree 100%. Um, the elephant in the room right now, I think, is on who owns it. Who who owns the music industry? You know, I, I know we've heard the the, the Rothstein's or, the, you know, we've heard about that. Nobody family. black. You heard <laughs> Nobody about black owns it. Yeah, and it seems like anytime you mention anybody of Jewish, descent there's a uh, immediate like they're going to shadow ban you you're going to get a whole bunch of criticism like we seem to did to the minister and nick cannon and nick cannon you know what i'm saying two brothers that just like nick cannon was literally just speaking his opinion and it wasn't even a new it was some old audio that surfaced and they pulled back up some old stuff and basically just tried to really end him you know and just to keep it keep it short and simple all based on his choice of words about jewish people but it seems like, you know, no one can talk about Jewish people. It seems like there's like a, a force around them where, you know, they kind of hold each other 
um, tight and they, they stay together and they make sure they um, attack anybody that comes and oppose, you know, their their move, like their, their movement. Because they've been rocking for so long as far as like having a stronghold, owning, you know, most of, you know, they own the record labels, you know, they're, they're owning uh, pretty much anything, all black affairs, you know, they kind of got a hand in everything, you know what I'm saying? So, could you, could you go into a little bit of that? Like, what do you think, what do you think the interest for for black affairs or where did that come from from I Jewish mean, people definitely took they definitely control the black economy and obviously like we said it's the ownership thing because if you compare what happened with Nick Cannon to Dave Chappelle yeah, it on. was an entirely different thing so Dave Chappelle you know again Jewish owners had take because it's um Viacom or Viacom yes that's the same company as um BET so and that it's Jewish owned. So regardless of the feelings that people have towards it, it's Jewish owned. And they, anytime black people want to talk about black economics or something about black ownership, they make sure that they label you anti-Semitic or they attach something that's like a moral dilemma to you. So to distract, you know, in ruin your character and make black people not want to listen to you. Like you said, they've done it to Minister Farrakhan as well. And they don't have any proof of anti-Semitism. You know, Nick Cannon should have stood on his ground because he didn't say anything wrong. But with the Dave Chappelle thing, after they took his show from him, he said, you know, he didn't go and ask them for it back. He didn't beg them. No, to Africa. He basically told the viewers, don't watch it. So people stopped watching it. They hit him up and they're like losing money mm -hmm. because, hello, we determine what, you know, the people and the customers make them the money at the end of the day. So they gave him the show back, gave him his license. So we do have the power, but a lot of us don't understand how much power and influence we have and how much we don't own. A lot of black people didn't even know we didn't own BT. Yeah, and so, I was surprised because I'd be thinking that this is common knowledge. I'm thinking that at this point we should know, um, you know, who owns stuff. Like, that's the first thing I ask when I go into businesses. I'm like, who owns this? Like, who's the owner? Is it black owned? We have that mindset. You know, yeah, a okay. lot of us are just kind of going with the flow. Like... Kim Kardashian's gonna be providing the clothing for the Olympics. Oh, okay. We as black people, you know, wow. we make the Olympics. Yeah, I mean, let's be honest, yeah, our talent, right. our skill, just like we make um, the music industry, just like we make the NBA industry. So it's like, we're just gonna be there. We're yeah. just happy to be there. And in yeah. situations like yeah. that, we're just happy to get record deals. We're just happy to yeah. be there. And we don't understand and have a focus on ownership. So So essentially what that makes us is well-paid slaves. Yeah, we're just a consumer community. And instead of being producers and manufacturers, and that relates to so many issues in our community because lack of wealth, lack of generational wealth, is the reason why we have... Like, for example, back to when you said, mm -hmm. can we blame these artists, right? Right, right? They want the money. We don't have economic wealth in our community. So it's the same reason why, like, the Fred Hampton situation, like, why so many, and during Quintipro, which is still active, mm -hmm. why so many of our own people were, you know, killing oh. our leaders. Stop right there. What is Quintipro? I know, but maybe someone... Oh, it's them. a counterintelligence program. Um, of the FBI, and it was the FBI coming in and infiltrating black movements like the Black Panther Party, Nation of Islam, just to stop us from coming together, uniting, and obviously getting black economic independence and stuff like that. Gotcha. So, I'm sorry. Huh? I was going to continue. But yeah, so the reason that we had the situation where some of our own were infiltrating and um, ended up being the person that pulled the trigger, they offered money. So it's always like, okay, yeah. well, we don't have economic wealth in our community. So we end right. up getting sellouts. We produce right. an environment for sellouts for yeah. people who are wanting to just push out any type of music in our community. So that's why it's always important. And I tell black people, we, we really have the power and the control. We have $1.3 trillion mm -hmm. in spending power. If we put that together and we started focusing on keeping the dollar in our community, we wouldn't have sellouts. We wouldn't have an environment where we allow people to be degrading, you know, our women and our music, promoting violence. It's it wouldn't happen. We wouldn't allow it. Yeah, I definitely agree. And just to kind of shift the topic a little bit, because I think that this is us in addressing a lot of the issues, but I think there are solutions as well. So, like, you know. 
we, we understand uh, one of the things that can help solve a lot of this is coming together, you know what I'm saying, and understanding that, you know, um, our unity is more powerful than atomic bomb. So if we're able to come together and we're able to understand that, you know, we shouldn't sell out when someone offers us a contract because nine out of ten, whatever they're offering you, you're going to make ten times that over the duration of whatever contract that is. Mm -hmm. So it, come, it has to come a time where we get educated. So I guess where I'm going with this is we probably should start with education. Like there should be, uh, you know, an unlearn, relearn process with, with, with us. Because a lot of us, you know, we're in the public school system. So we're not getting the best education, you know what I'm saying? We're getting the bare minimum education. We're getting, you know, and most of the time the teachers don't want to be there. We don't want to be there because we feel the you know, the the feeling or the vibe from the teachers, they just dare to get a check. You know, and a lot of them say that, like, you know, like, I'm getting paid regardless, like, whether or not y'all learn or not. So, um, and then you got to understand, this is what produces the school to prison pipeline because this is what produced, you know, this is what the environment that these kids are living in. This is the environment these kids are, just they're rapping about these environments because this is what they're around. This is what they know. So, um, it kind of all comes back to, like, you know, our youth, you know what I'm saying? That's kind of how we can get, a, a, in my opinion, a stranglehold. Well, that's what social media is, is leveraging. You know, now our grandparents didn't have social media, but now right. that we have it, we can leverage it and right, make these videos, inform our people. And it's also just like, when you are a rapper, when you are in the music industry, when you are a black person with a platform, Stop going to Gucci and stop mm. going to Chanel and promote black owned brands and promote a message through your music because we can change the culture because our culture is that influential. Like I said about the Popeyes thing, like we gave them $65 million in advertisement about the chicken sandwich mm -hmm. that we made. We're not going to make it where we treat it like how we treat everything else, where we try to um, counsel it and like, you know, I would think that we can we have the power to just you know, throw them away, you know what I'm saying? We shouldn't throw them away. We're not going to, um, we're not going to do that, you know what I'm saying? And that's the, that's the thing, it's not this like two-sided thing. Yeah. You can't believe in this agenda without being homophobic or, you know, hating um, the LGBTQ community, which is not true. Um, it's simply, look at it, like how many black men and black women relationships do you see pushed across the media and TV mm. shows, and TV shows, Netflix and stuff like that, you rarely see it. Yeah, you see yeah. black men coming out in the LGBTQ community yeah, yeah. way more and more are black men with non-black women. So the traditional black family between a black man and black woman, we don't see that promoted. So you have to ask yourself, why not? And you have to admit that there's an absence in that. So, you know, once you come to terms with that, we can have a discussion. But yeah. if you're in denial, we can't, you know, it's going to be an emotional conversation rather than the evidence. Yeah, I agree 100%. So just to kind of, you know, I think that we should teach our people, um, like even a little Nas X, you know what I'm saying? I think that I mean, at this point, you know, he probably feel like, you know, he's he's grown and he's he, he's firm in what he believes in. And not only that, but like, I'm sure we all have relatives in our family that, you know, are, are gay or come from that as well. So it's like, you know, what we need to do instead of just making it seem like we're against them is we should just... Try to teach them, you know what I'm saying? And, and reach them young, too, because a lot of those traits, if corrected young, you know, can be prevented, you know what I'm saying? And it, it kind of always goes back to the man and the female, uh, the mother and the father, though that foundation is so strong. So without those without those pillars, you know, it kind of let everything, it's like a domino effect. It falls. If the man is not present in the household, it creates an imbalance in the household. It creates a lot of, uh, you know, femininity to be to take place and then it, it's just not a, a good look like I know for me being uh, raised by my single mother at times you know what I'm saying like as a growing man growing into my own at, at a certain point you don't want to you don't want your mother coming to you talking to you a certain kind of way because although she your mom's like you got your own little manhood coming up she like I want to be a man I want to you know spread you know put my chest out and you know what I'm saying move how I want to move so um, that's a big, big, big like deal in, in our communities is, you know, getting with a woman, a black woman, and just and sticking with her, you know what I'm saying? And not making everything, you know, everything is so fast food, microwaves, the microwave generation that we live in. So like, we meet a girl, you know, we found her attractive, 
have sex, you know what I'm saying? Next thing you know, you got a baby. Now you got a whole another problem to deal with or a good problem, whatever you want to call it. But but it's, it's only an issue when we don't properly, you know, understand like what this is, the life, you know what I'm saying? And not only that, but, you know, now you got a whole, you got to deal with this for another 18 years and then you got to worry about, you know, what type of person he's going to be because he had to have kids one day. So it's like a, a repeated cycle. Do you want to continue to pass down these traumas or do you want to rectify this by, you know, just learning how to make the science of mating? Uh, the mission talk about this all the time. It's very, very key. They didn't teach us about the science of mating, the science of warfare. I think it's one more. It's the other one. Do you know? Um, if you, you said business. Business, no, I didn't warfare. Say business. So that's, that's the last one. You did. You said business. No, business? I said the science of mating. And oh, warfare yeah, and business. And business. So, yeah, those are the three things. Um, is there anything that you want to, t to tackle? I mean, a lot of things happened over the past couple of weeks. Um, and I know you, we talk, you talk a lot about them on your page individually, but is there anything that you want to kind of talk about and address right now? I mean, I think this is probably more important ownership and like economics and generational wealth is huge. Yeah. I mean, I think you should, um, I mean, do you want to talk about, you know, do a little self-promotion? Self promotion. Yeah, like you got your own your own <laughs> business. You just you just launched. Yeah, Shout I do. You. I have um, a website, millabrat dot com, and it has you know empowerment, empowering messages on T shirts, basically saying how we need to rebuild Black Wall Street, and hopefully you guys know what Black Wall Street was. Right. It was a uh, separated Black owned community that was super successful economically, and it was burned down and. 1921 by the government and um, they actually made a day of remembrance for the Biden administration so before the Juneteenth you know fiasco that people were mad about them making Juneteenth a holiday because it's just symbolism they made that a day of remembrance even though you know we deserve reparations for that because they ruined economic progress but that's a side note um, and yeah so I have like jewelry earrings it's all black owned so definitely come through we definitely need to keep the dollar in our community. Yeah, I agree 100%. And y'all know where to tap in with me at. But if you don't, the name of the podcast and the name of my website are the same, creativeuniverse.com. Um, I could go into just the meaning behind it, but I keep it short and just by saying, like, you know, the Creative Universe is basically a movement that I started. Um, and from that, I wanted to just create some type of, like, positivity, like a brand that you can look at and feel empowered, you know, when I think of Marathon, I think of empowerment, I think of go-getter, I think of, uh, you know, creative person, driven, entrepreneur-minded. So I was like, yo, man, I gotta have a Marathon. I gotta have something that represents that for me and my, and my journey. So I created Creators Universe, and I think that creating a universe, creating your own reality is, is what, you know, I wanted to do with that. And that's kind of, it's kind of what it is. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty good for this episode. Um, yeah, I think we talked about a few a few very important topics. Let us know what y'all thought about the BET Awards. We yeah. want to know. We didn't talk about the BET Awards, but we kind of talked about what y'all should... Talked about it. Yeah, we talked about it, but we, we did it at the same time. But, nah, okay, so yeah, it's your girl, Kimante. And Nella. Yeah, and um, this is the Creative Universe podcast. And, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll be shooting these probably a lot more, so be on the lookout for that. Um, I'm probably going to just change a lot of different... Uh, aesthetic things about how I shoot my podcast. I definitely want to take it a lot more serious. So y'all are there along the journey with me the whole way. All right, y'all. Peace.